The last, pale, stripes of light were fading quickly behind the city's expanse that evening. The street, still damp from a recent rain, glimmered thinly. The street lights had not yet flickered to life, and the street was hanging, suspended, in that breathless, squinting moment between light and dark. I was on my way home, from what had been a difficult job, leaving me exhausted and grim. I took long steps, my hands balled into fists, shoved deep into my pockets. It was chilly, not biting cold, but a murmuring one. Cold that sent its pallid hands lightly creeping along your skin, whispers of touch that raised goosebumps, hair in suspension. I felt my heart rate quicken, my breathing become labored. I paused, eyes fluttering shut. I heard the muted crunch of a single footstep behind me. Then nothing. There was someone following me. I set off at a dead run, all springs and gears turning. Now that there was no mistaking it, I most certainly had a pursuer. I didn't look back, I only ran. My feet slapped the pavement hard, jarring. We ran together, my pursuer and I. A manic, high stakes dance. Through Hyde streets, back alleys, and over garbage cans. Finally, we reached my street. I jumped one handed over a fence, through the backyard, and ran to my front stoop. I reached my front door, a mad scramble with my keys. I knew if I could make it in the basement before I was caught, I would be home free. I ran to the basement door, shoved it open, then tore down the stairs, jumping down the last two steps before hiding in the shadows. My pursuer showed as he crept down the steps of my basement, each foot descending further into the murky gloom. A weak ray of light shining down on the basement stairs allowed me to see my pursuer's hand brushing and feeling his way along the cold basement wall, searching for a light switch. I heard his every breath, ragged, heavy, and wet, and his hand met with the light switch, and it quickly flicked on. I watched as the man in the blue uniform stood frozen in terror as his gaze swept over the room. From the blood-stained walls to the gory freezer in the corner to what was left of my previous dinner on the surgical table, he didn't hear me creep up behind him, but he must have felt the throbbing bulge in my pants as I emptied a full syringe into the flesh of his neck. Well, officer, I whispered to the policeman's ear as his bloody body went limp. Looks like you've solved the case. <laughs>